giving up your summer in the name of civic duty. We talk with a woman who knows what the Bulger jury will face. Plus, it was horrifying, truly horrifying. Weeks after the intense manhunt for the Boston bombing suspects, is Watertown getting back to normal? And Jared Bowen gets caught in the act with a film that's been nine years in the making. What about me would you like to change? <laughs> now on Greater Boston. Good evening. The James Whitey Bulger trial is expected to last four months, likely through Labor Day. The lengthy proceedings will be a sacrifice for prospective jurors, a sacrifice my next guest knows well. Beverly Richards spent two months in the jury box in the federal trial of Tarek Mahana. We'll speak with her in a minute, but first a look at what that case entailed. It was less than two years ago that a jury convicted Tarek Mahana of traveling overseas for terrorist training and translating jihadist videos like these. <laughs> that video was one of 800 exhibits presented to Mahana's jury over the course of a two-month trial that also had nearly 50 witnesses. In the end, it only took jurors 10 hours to find Mahana guilty. After the verdict, defense attorney J.W. Carney, who is also representing Whitey Bulger, claimed fear drove them to convict Mahana. The charges scare people. The charges scared us when we first saw them. But juror Beverly Richards told the Boston Globe that some of her fellow jurors cried as they decided Mahana's fate and that the verdict was not black and white. And former juror Beverly Richards is here. Welcome. Thank you. Well, we're all very curious about the process. You know, once you get seated, what is your day like? I mean, they pay you, but how does that work? Um, you are expected to be in by 8 o'clock, and they want you seated. They give you about a half an hour with coffee. And then they, um, once everyone's there, they bring you in, and you sit for about two hours and listen to testimony. You get about a 15-minute break and come back. And then you're dismissed about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's about a good five-hour day. All right. So in your case, you work retail, so you could go to your job afterwards. What about everybody else? It was a wide range of people. There were a couple of retired people, um, a young man who was unemployed. There was a nurse who took a leave of absence. It didn't appear that anybody financially was stressed mm. over it in this particular case. It didn't seem to be an issue for anybody. People, their work schedule seemed to be flexible enough. Mm. One woman was a waitress, so she was working later. Um, it didn't seem to be an imposition. There was one woman, though, who had to travel from Cape Cod every day on the plane. I from mean, who paid for that? The state. <laughs> Why would they ever pick someone who they... I have no idea. It was amazing, and she was there for a good month. And then something happened and she was there no longer. I think maybe someone in her family got ill. It was just a lot to expect for someone to get up, take the commuter plane from Martha's Vineyard into Boston. That's mind-boggling because too. they don't really pay for anything. They didn't even pay for your parking. They do pay for parking. Oh, I thought it was $50, $50 and then you had to cover the parking. Right. What they do is they pay mileage from where you live uh -huh. and... The parking, which I believe was about $15 a day, and then I believe it was, they broke it down for you. It came out to $50 a day. I see. So it's 15 you know, they designated this for parking, I this see. for, and then $25, I think, was your pay for the day. Mm -hmm. Did you find the exhibits and all the information overwhelming, daunting? In your case, there was 800. I think in the Whitey Bulger case, there's going to be more like 8,000. I think on a daily basis when you show up and that's what you're focusing on, I really don't think it is. Because at the end, when you're trying to backtrack in your mind what you want to see and go through, it is a little hard to go through all of that information, but they, it's all electronic now. So they do supply you with the papers, but they also, you have a, um, a big video monitor in the room and you can go in and key in any numbers and bring up the evidence. So I think that makes it a lot easier. We use that quite a bit. We really didn't use the papers. And did all. you 
Did you really not talk to your fellow jurors about the case at all until the deliberations started? We really did not, and we were there for two months. You were there in the morning probably for 20 minutes having coffee, um, and then another 10 or 15 minutes. And not that it's not hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are days you walk in and you just sort of roll your eyes at what you've heard. Um, it's hard not to. You're a human being. Mm -hmm. But then somebody will give you a look and smile and say, be good. You know, I think that... To be honest, I think that people don't realize that jurors take their responsibility very seriously. Mm -hmm. And when Jay Carney had mentioned that he thought we were scared, I found that insulting. Yeah. Very insulting. I don't think anybody was afraid. It's a very serious business judging somebody else's. And you actually, you had some qualms. You asked to address the court. What happened? Well, my qualms were about the sentencing guidelines. Yeah. I think that... You know, we live in tough times, and but we have degrees for everything. There's degrees for murder, there's degrees for assault, but we really don't have degrees of terrorism charges. It's sort of lump sum. And I just felt that we, it was mentioned in the trial on numerous occasions that he could be given life, which I don't think was fair either. Uh, you know, they tell us we're not supposed to concern ourselves with the punishment, but you're asking us to judge somebody else's actions. And I think there needs to be degrees, and I do think that I had no qualms on his guilt. We worked really hard. We looked at it. I think, you know, people say that it was a crime of words. I don't see that at all. Mm -hmm. To me, it was a crime of treason. Um, but I do think that putting somebody in jail for 17 years is excessive for what the crime was. I don't feel the punishment suited the mm. crime. You also have kind of an odd connection, not only through Jay Carney now, but Kevin Weeks used to live well, in a I building lived that you... In, I grew up in South Boston, yeah. and um, I lived in the same neighborhood of all of these people. Kevin Weeks lived on... I lived on the first floor, and he lived on the second floor. Really? Did you know him? Not re He was a couple of years older than I was. Mm -hmm. He was, I think, maybe a senior in high school at the time when we lived in the same building. So he was sort of the guy that was just running in and out. I think he was uh, boxing at the time. Mm -hmm. So I can't say I really knew him mm -hmm. well, but I knew So overall, was it a good experience for you being on the jury? It was hard, and I have to say it was a very interesting journey. We all have our opinions. I'm not shy yeah. about mine and you think you know how you feel about things and then you sit there and you learn that things are not so black and white mm. and uh, yeah, I'm glad I did it mm. actually. All right, Beverly Richards, thanks so much for coming and telling us your story. Thank you.